as we welcome in the CBO, the Chief Baseball Officer for Major League Baseball, former Yankee manager, Hall of Famer Joe Torre. Good to have you with us. Thanks, Bob. Uh, speaking of old school Vegas, I, I got to think. I saw Zimmer in that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I looked at that, I'm thinking, you got to be like a Sinatra D. Martin Rat Pack guy, right? Uh, yeah, I loved them. Are you kidding me? Yeah, very much so. And uh, I was fortunate enough to to see uh, Sinatra many times and uh, also Elvis Presley in here in Vegas wow. many times, which was pretty cool. All right, so let's talk news of the day or past day and a half. You're part of the Today's Game Era committee yesterday voting in Harold Baines and Lee Smith to the Hall of Fame. But George Steinbrenner did not get the necessary votes. Can you take us behind the thought process in that room? Well, it, it you know, everybody has an opinion. Uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, I guess it was, what, 16 voters and... Um, it, uh, everybody pretty much uh, has something to say about every one of the candidates. And it, it's just something that it's, it's my first experience in a committee. And I, th I found it fascinating. And, you know, you're in there for a long time and it doesn't even feel like it because you're, you're talking about baseball and, and people who have been around baseball. But um, I, I think it was more about the, the, the two that got voted in. And, of course, uh, you know, Lou Pinella came very close, uh, but Harold Baines, uh, you know, a lot of people just talked about his, you know, service and, and, and the type, type of hitter he was and the clutch player he was. And uh, in regards to uh, Lee Smith, who close to 500 saves, which is pretty impressive. In fact, when he retired, he, he was leading everybody in saves. Uh, and I guess that may have been passed to. So it was one of those things, and uh, I don't. And we don't know who people vote for. We only know who we vote for, and everything's very confidential. And uh, you know, I, I I felt pretty pretty comfortable in that room. Joe, I know a couple of years ago when you got in the Hall of Fame, you actually said you felt that George Steinbrenner is a Hall of Famer. During those meetings, can you give us any idea if you had the ability to? offer your support for George Steinbrenner and say the reasons why you felt he belongs in Cooperstown? Well, as I said, Jack, without getting, you know, because I don't want to violate any confidentiality that we had there, was everybody really gives their take on, on, on their feeling on all the candidates. And, and I, you know, that's as far as I want to really take this. One of the guys who did get in was Lee Smith. And one of the guys who's on the ballot coming up is one of our favorites, Mariana Rivera. Talk to me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got a chance. <laughs> but you know what? I always get on this guy because he's not going to be a unanimous guy because of the sports writers. There's going to be somebody out there who's not going to vote Wait, for Wait, how him. can you get my ballot? Will have Mariana Rivera. Right. 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 Give me Joe. your thoughts on Mo. How about that? <laughs> Uh, you know, the best there was. They made me. A, he made me a great manager. You know, I, I, and especially, you know, my first year with the Yankees in '96, when uh, he enabled me to manage for six innings only because he came in in the seventh and eighth, and, and uh, it was the only tough time he had. Uh, and Michael, I know you're going to remember this. Is is early '97 where it was the first time he turned around and there was nobody behind him. You know, he's going to be the one finishing up. And, and the fact that, uh, you know, he was going to get the ball. I remember one time at the stadium, he pitched against Oakland, and he faced the same guy twice in the same game. And I, you know, I, I said to him after the game, I said, it's yours, pal. I, uh, you know, it may take you a while, but it's yours. And uh, I think he had like 40 saves that year, although he did give up the home run to... Alomar that uh, Mel and I made sure we talked to him about before he went home and then once he got the spring training. I I'm wondering, um, just to amplify what went on in that room, you said Pinella came close. I, I think the report was he it was one away. He had it was 11 one away, votes. and I only know that because I read what right. you guys read. So when, when that's going on, is it Lou Pinella the player or also Lou Pinella the manager as well as it all come together i i you know now i'm i'm guessing because you know i'm not uh, we we're not the ones that put these candidates in place right. you, you have another panel who who does that mainly newspaper uh, or media people that that put it in place and i i think uh, i would say that he was put on for being a manager but once He's on. You you can look at his statistics gotcha. as a player. Now, do you believe that with a guy like Harold Baines getting in, who was a very good player and was off the ballot in five years with the Riders because he got under five percent? I look at it, John. I go, well, how does Mattingly and Hernandez not get in? Do you think that this opens the door for them? Well, again, I you know I, I thought it was a good mix of people. 
you know, everybody, you, you had Andy McPhail and you had Claire Smith and, and uh, Tim Kirchin and, you know, uh, Maddox and LaRussa and myself, it was uh, Ozzie Smith. Um, you know, I, I guess it's depending. And again, I, I went into that room because, you know, we get all the stats and stuff in advance. And I went into that room, you know, with some preconceived notions on what I wanted to do. But, you know, there's so much stimulating conversation about, you know, uh, everybody's take on each individual that... You know, you can't help but uh, making sure you go over it again. A part of the conversation for you lately has been pace of play coming up in 2019, making some changes. Is a pitch clock coming up in the foreseeable future? It's, so. it's going to be it's going to be talked about. Uh, there's no question. You're going to talk about that. You're going to talk about shifts. We have a, a rules committee meeting on Wednesday, uh, which we'll talk over a lot of stuff. It's usually a three or four hour meeting. And again, you know, pace of play is one thing, length of game is another thing. You know, I personally feel uh, I'd like to see uh, more action. Uh, I'd like to see more contact. You know, this year we had more strikeouts than hits in the game, and, and that shouldn't be. You know, we have very talented players out there, and I, I really would like to, uh, you know, I, I, like I used to say as a manager, think small and big things will happen, but everybody seems to be thinking big. So I know that Commissioner Rob Manford has talked about shifts a lot. Do you have an idea in your head, and obviously we're not keeping this etched in stone, about how shifts would actually be enacted, about whether it be two infielders on one side a second, two on the other side? What would you like to see happen in that regard? Well, you know, I don't know. I mean, when you look at, uh, I think, the charts that tell you where all the balls are hit, it's usually in the middle of the field, which is no secret. That, that's been for years. That's why you wanted to be strong up the middle, good shortstop, good second baseman. Uh, and, you know, how you would go about it, I really don't know. You know, there's been, there's been talk about two and two. There's talk about, you know, keeping guys from going into the outfield. Uh, I know when I played and, and the old Cincinnati ballpark, D uh, Davey Concepcion, every time I thought I hit a single in a hole between third and short, you know, he laughed at me and picked <laughs> the ball up and threw a three-hopper to first base on the artificial surface. But... Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, you know, the shifts. The, the thing that bothers me about shifts, Jack, is the fact that we're not making uh, uh, more adjustments as a hitter uh, to uh, to go against the shifts. Well, Joe, we know you've got a busy agenda. We thank you for joining us, as always. If you do want to see your buddy Elvis again, he is alive. I don't know if you know that, but he is alive and well in Vegas. I have a half a dozen of them, I think. <laughs> Joe.